All right, and we are back with number 21 out of 100. So these are called literal equations. There's no numbers. We're just solving for letters. So let's take a look here at number 21. I have x plus c equals d minus r. And I want to get x by itself. All I have to do is subtract c from both sides. x equals d minus r minus c. And they're, they've got these in weird order. So let's see which one matches. I got negative r, negative c, and positive d. Negative r, negative c, positive d, b. Okay, let's move on to number 22. They want it solved for x, and we're given z equals y plus m plus x. They want us to solve for x. Okay, so they want x on the left side if you look at the answers. So the first thing I've got to do is subtract x from both sides. Okay, and that's just going to move the x over here. I've got negative x plus z equals y plus m. So to get the z away, trying to isolate the x variable on the left side, I'll subtract z from both sides. And now I've got negative x equals y plus m minus z. Now I'm not quite done because I've got this negative x right here. I can't have a negative sign in front of the x. So what I need to do is divide everything by negative 1. <clears throat> so that's basically like those negative 1's cancel here, and now I've got x by itself. And the effect of dividing anything by negative 1 is to really just change its sign. So instead of y, we'll have negative y. Instead of m, we'll have negative m. And then instead of negative z, we'll have positive z. So x equals negative y minus m plus z. Let's go hunting for the answer. So I've got a negative y, a negative m, and a positive z. A negative y, a negative m, and a positive z is b. Okay. And that's number 22. Those are fun, uh, but I think we're done with them. So now we're going to jump to number 23, where we're just solving kind of like simple single variable equations. 3 equals n minus 1. If I want n by itself, I just add 1 to both sides. So 4 equals n. That's b. Number 24. P plus 20 equals 39. I want p by itself, so I'm going to subtract 20 from both sides. So p equals 39 minus 20, which is 19. That's number 24. Number 25. Got some division. So I have negative 20v equals 260. So in order to get rid of that negative 20 in front of the v, 
I have to divide both sides by negative 20. So V equals, well, one quick thing I can do is kind of cancel these zeros out. So I've got negative 26 over two and 26 divided by two is 13. So V equals negative 13. C. Okay, looking at number 26 here, 19K equals negative 57. So I just want to divide both sides by 19. So K equals, now what you want to do in your head, because who knows their 19s, right? Who knows multiples of 19s? Just think in your mind, what times nine will end in a number that's seven? Okay, so what times nine ends in has a, a product that ends in a seven? And the answer is three, right? Nine times three is 27. So what we wanna do kind of in side work is we wanna go ahead and divide 57 by three, see if we get 19. Three goes into five one time with two as a remainder. And then I need three to go into 27, it goes in nine, nine times. So sure enough, three, is the quotient when you divide 57 by 19. And so just remember to put this little negative sign out front. So the answer is going to be negative three. Okay. Moving on to number 27. Here we've got a multi-step equation. One plus six in plus five equals negative six, All right? So whenever I see problems like this, the first step is to combine like terms. One plus five is six. So I have six plus six in equals negative six. And I wanna get close to that in, but first I've gotta subtract out the six so 6n equals negative 6 minus 6 is negative 12. And then I just divide both sides by 6. n equals negative 12 divided by 6, which is negative 2. D. All right. Looking at number 28, I've got negative 7x minus 4x equals 11. And before I do anything, I can combine like terms here. Negative 7x minus 4x is negative 11x. And that's equal to negative, that's equal to positive 11. So here I'm just gonna divide everything by negative 11. Those cancel out and I have x equals 11 divided by negative 11, which is just negative one. A. Okay. We just see the problems becoming just a little bit more complicated here. We have six n minus five n plus two equals 2n minus 5 plus 5. All right, so right away I noticed something. I got negative 5 and positive 5. Oh, those just cancel out, all right? Make our life easier. Here I've got like terms 6n minus 5n. That's just 1n. We don't have to write the 1. So this is just going to simplify to n plus 2 equals 2n. So we're going to do a little bit of gymnastics here. First, I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. And that's going to give me n equals 
equals 2n minus 2. And then I'm going to subtract 2n from both sides because I want those n's to hang out together. Now I've got 1n minus 2n, which gives me negative n equals negative 2. Now I just divide everything by negative 1. Remember, that's a 1 right there. That'll cancel out those negative 1s, leaving n equal to negative 2 divided by negative 1, which is just positive 2. Let's see. And number 30. We have 11 minus 3k equals k minus 5. Okay, my goal is to get the k's together, but first I'll go ahead and subtract this 11 from both sides. I have negative 3k equals k, and negative 5 minus 11 is negative 16, so k minus 16. Now I'm just going to subtract k from both sides. I've got negative 3k minus 1k gives me negative 4k. Negative 4k equals negative 16. I think we all know where this is headed. Divide both sides by negative 4. k equals positive 4. All right. Number 31. Ooh, we get to do... The distributive property, so exciting. We have negative 19 minus 8n equals, I'm going to go ahead and write negative 1, open parentheses, 3 plus 6n. We have many opportunities open to us. But since we're very comfortable with this concept of distributive property, we'll distribute the negative 1. We could have divided it out, but we're going to leave the left side the same for this step. Negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. Negative 1 times 6n is negative 6n. And here we are. So now I'll start moving some numbers around. I'll add this 19 to both sides. Now I have negative 8n equals 16 minus 6n. I will add 6n to both sides. Just doing the inverse operation over and over again, folks. So negative 8 plus 6 is positive 2, or rather negative 2. So this is negative 2n equals 16. Dividing both sides by negative 2, I have n equals negative 8. A. Moving on to number 32, 5b plus 11 equals 4, open parentheses, b minus 6. I hate when they put the letter b in the equation because it looks like a 6. It's confusing. And then they look at that. They give a 6b. It's like they're trying to confuse us. I didn't write the questions. So we're going to distribute that 4. We have the uh, left side remains unchanged for this step. 5b plus 11 equals 4b minus 24 plus 6b. And now I notice uh, like terms I can combine. We'll leave this left side unchanged for the time being. 5b plus 11 equals 10b minus 24. Now I'll subtract 10b from both sides. Get those b's together. 5b minus 10b is negative 5b. Bring down that plus 11. 
and that equals negative 24. Okay, now I'll subtract 11 from both sides. Further isolating the variable, I've got negative 5b equals, I'm basically adding here, 35, negative 35. Now, final step, divide both sides by negative 5. Okay, since 5 is a factor of 35, ne negative 35 divided by negative 5 is just 7. B equals 7. Okay. Number 33. We've got 5 open parentheses negative 3n minus 3 equals 3 open parentheses 3 minus 6n okay we're gonna distribute twice here here that's the first distribution here's the second distribution 5 times negative 3n is negative 15n and 5 times negative 3 is negative 15. Equals 3 times 3 is 9. And 3 times negative 6n is negative 18n. So now we got rid of all the parentheses. Let's add 18n to both sides to just gather the n's together. Negative 15n plus 18n gives us positive 3n. Bring down that minus 15 equals 9. Now inverse operation, additive inverse, plus 15 on both sides. We have 3n equals 24. Okay, we all know where this is headed. Divide both sides by 3. Division property of equality, n equals 24 divided by 3, which has an even quotient of 8. So n equals 8. Number 34. Okay, look at all the fun we're going to have here. We're going to distribute, combine like terms. We've got variables on both sides of the equation. It is a party and a problem. 2 open parentheses 6x plus 2 plus 7 equals negative 7 open parentheses negative x minus 5 close parentheses plus 6 my goodness we shouldn't be allowed to have this much fun in math class we're going to distribute the 2 and then we're going to distribute the negative 7 oh boy oh boy oh boy 2 times 6x is 12x plus 2 times 2 is 4 plus 7 equals negative 7 times negative x is positive 7x. Negative 7 times negative 5 is positive 35. And then bring down that plus 6. And now we're going to play a little game of combine like terms on both sides of the equal sign. Wow. We have 12x plus 11 equals 7x plus 41. And now it's time to subtract 11 from both sides. Okay, and that's going to give us 12x equals 7x. And then we're going to have to borrow here. We even get to borrow in our subtraction problem. Okay, starting to lose my mind. We didn't have to borrow there. I was just so excited about the possibility of borrowing that I lost sight of the fact that 1 minus 1 is 0. Okay. Further proof that they will hire anyone to do this job. Okay, So 7x plus 30. Okay, so this is 12x equals 7x plus 30. Now we'll subtract 7x from both sides. 12x minus 7x gives us 5x equals 30. 
and now we just divide both sides by 5. x equals 30 divided by 5, which is 6. So x equals 6. And that's the end of number 34. OK, so then we're moving on to proportions. Let's see what's coming up ahead. More fun proportions. OK, well, you know what? I think I'll save that for another video. So let's see what we accomplished in this video. We ended at number 34, and we began at number 21. So 21 through 34. See you in the next video.